As Barbara mentioned, uh, today is not only Membership Sunday, but an important day in the Christian calendar, that is Transfiguration Sunday. So here is Mark 9, our lectionary gospel reading for today. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, And from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. In 2012, Irene and I climbed Mount Tabor in Israel, Palestine, a high hill that claims to be the Mount of Transfiguration. And as we neared the top, a large, ornate church building towered over us called the Church of the Transfiguration. My first thought was, Peter got what he asked for after all. A permanent structure to contain and protect the glory of God. It's ironic that a a giant marble building sits as a memorial to a moment when Peter was basically ignored by Jesus Jesus for coming up with this ill-conceived idea to institutionalize his experience, to build a structure for something that could not be contained. Well, I think this gospel story is an appropriate one for us to ponder now in our congregation as we are focusing on some matters that might seem somewhat institutional at first glance. Today, we recognize some persons bringing their formal membership to this congregation, this organized congregation. Today, we also begin a time of ramping up our plans to do some major repairs and renovations to this church building, this shelter where people often come to catch a glimpse of God's glory. Any connection between these earthly matters of ours and this gospel story? What would Jesus say about church membership? What would Jesus say about church buildings in general? Jesus is not against buildings, per se, or any other structural matters. What Jesus seemed most concerned about was that structures not become idols, but rather tools for extending God's reign, for moving out into God's mission. As soon as the glory faded at the top of the mountain, it was time to walk down the mountain and face the real world with all its pain and brokenness and beauty, and to keep moving with God. Building a shelter on the mountaintop would have been to create an idol out of a momentary experience. They would have missed out on the activity of God happening right then at the bottom of the mountain. And If you read on, you'll see what was going on down there. Maybe that's how we should think of Membership Sunday. And maybe that's how we should think of our physical building. What really matters in the Christian life is the act of following Jesus into mission. It's the journey of being a disciple, learning from Jesus, but being on the move with Jesus. So when we join the body of Christ, we join a dynamic movement more than an institution. 
So Membership Sunday is not really about anyone's formal status in the organization. It's not about the church role or any other formal document. The heart of this service is testimony. It's bearing witness to a dynamic faith. We'll hear a few stories from some pilgrims in faith. Pilgrims, people on the move. People who are still trying to figure out, like the rest of uh, of us, what it means to follow Jesus in life and what it means to be in covenant with this particular group of Jesus followers and what it means to be on the move with us. And I also want to make this strong claim that movement and mission is at the heart of any decision we need to make about our church building. There's nothing sacred about these bricks and mortar or anything else inside these walls. What makes this physical space holy is a people using it to worship and serve God and God's purposes and to minister God's healing and hope in and to and throughout the world. What makes it holy is making it safe and welcoming for all our children, including our neighborhood children, and giving shelter from the cold to our homeless neighbors at times, and providing a space for people to gather in weekly worship, for our immigrant neighbors to gather in fellowship, for addicts to meet and support each other, for nodding comforters and packing school kits for refugees, for small churches to meet to worship in a different language, for couples to publicly exchange vows. And though it happens all too often, for the community to gather to celebrate a life that has ended, and to grieve and comfort each other, and to hear the gospel word of resurrection proclaimed. To be a member of Parkview Mennonite Church and to make this physical space a home is to say that we are part of this movement. We are a people moving together into God's mission within these walls and beyond these walls. So where we are today may not be where we are tomorrow. I think that's important to keep in mind in all these matters that we tend to. The New Testament often describes the church with living metaphors. One of the most frequent metaphors is the opposite of institutional, the human body. Alive, dynamic, growing, interactive. Listen to part of 1 Corinthians 12. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. That was Paul's words to the church at Corinth, and it is our, also our high calling as followers of Jesus to be part of the body, to function in a healthy way within that body to the good of the whole and participate with the body in fulfilling its purpose. That's what these new members will be doing today and what the rest of us will be reminded to do, to offer ourselves, our hands, our heart, our all. And let's all reflect on that as we listen to Maria and Christopher sing the U2 song, Yahweh. 